Welcome to the Bold Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. This is a beautiful day. Today, the 8th of August. This is the day. I'm just shooting this, this video. Um, yes, some few minutes to 8th. So, of course, it's going to be published on 8th. I received this message and I just want to start this analysis by it. Hi, Kevin. Thank you very much for your analysis and we are praying for sister Sarah, for my daughter Sarah. I'm a mother of seven and all my children, we are going to vote, all my family, we are going to vote Baba because, <laughs> I don't know whether I should read what text. Because now, and they were making fun with that, because I'm a single mother, Baba is going to be their father. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just received that message eh? in WhatsApp. Very overwhelming that there is also the household voting, family voting. But there you can also uh, challenge. I can also challenge you here that uh, are you also going to vote as a family? It's telling me that the kids are going to vote for Baba because they are they are brought in by they were brought up by a single mother, and he's telling me. But to talk about they are going to vote for Baba because now Baba is going to be their father. <laughs> wow, that is very interesting. That despite of these hiccups here and there, this election is going to be free and fair. This election is one that I can say is a replica of the 2002, where I see a direct a winner with a very big margin. And one of the most difficult results to dispute, even in the Supreme Court. This is something that, for me, I see. So, turn out in your numbers. Come out. As early as uh, 3 a.m., personally, will be voting in Nairobi. Of course, for some reasons, let me still, I'll mention my polling station after the voting tomorrow, because I'll be heading there. So, where's the joke? Now, uh, I wanted to talk about something here. The postponement of Mombasa and Kakamega is opening array of thoughts and people are asking questions. What exactly is happening? But I want to try to answer these two questions and in the context of Mombasa and Kakamega issue. Is the presidential ballot going to be suppressed? The answer is no. Mombasa Abdul Samad Nasir agents, when they were going through the ballot papers, when they were um, they were just trying to verify, they noticed that one. I think the ballot paper had the name Mombasa, but the candidates were Kilifi candidates. So that means that maybe there is a county somewhere where Mombasa ballot papers are, or simply there are no ballot papers. There are no ballot papers for Mombasa. So it's Abdul Swamad that wrote to IBC. Uh, they reached out to the commission and told the commission about that abnormality. And the commission acted swiftly just to make sure that election that pace can be cancelled. Um, in Mombasa, I can't excuse them a bit because remember the issue of uh, suspension there was even suspension there and i think the ballot printing a company might come out and explain there was a point that the commission had said that they had stopped i think there was a court injunction that was stopping the commission from uh printing the ballot papers for mombasa gubernatorial gubernatorial seat so it is a possibility that there could be a mishap but because you could see that it is the issue of Gina Mombasa, but no names of the candidates, it's something that can only come from the printer. It's something that you can see. Also, in Kakamega, there are also uh, mishap in terms of uh, ballot because there was a place where uh, Kirinyaga, gubernatorial seat, ballots were somewhere found in, in Kakamega. I don't know how they found their way in Kakamega. Of course, it's something you can, can always question about. So, however, in Kakamega, the election would have happened, but it did not happen because if you allow it to go on with that abnormality, then it can open avenues. And if there is that abnormality, what stops someone from going to the nearest, um, getting the nearest vendor in, in, uh, in River Road 
and print 100,000 ballot papers and through that you can do some monkey business with it because the security features are not um, are not configured. So someone can say, where well, if you say that, then the election will actually fail the, uh, tr the, the trust test. So the issue about presidential ballot being suppressed, however, I saw many people thinking about that. But I see the presidential ballot or other presidential vote normally attracts more attention and attracts a bigger turnout than even the governor. Many people go to the ballot to vote for the president. Then the governor comes in. If it would have been reverse, that in Kakamega and, and Mombasa, the voters are not voting for president, but they are going to vote for the others, I, I think it would have been a very legitimate question on whether the presidential ballot are going to be suppressed. And I see that is not a possibility. Number two, something I also see, the president-elect, because these two areas are now going to have by-elections after, the outcome of this election, the president-elect, is going to influence that, those elections later. For example, if Raila wins, then Azimio shall have the mood of victory. People will be in celebratory mood, and it will be very difficult for an opposition candidate, especially in those two areas, it will be very difficult for that opposition candidate to make to get his way. And remember, Raila is a politician, so if he's the president, now for him to campaign, he might not go to campaign there, but it will be very easy for him to get an easy win in Kakamega and Mombasa because of the victory euphoria. And my position is, I think Kakamega is a decoy here. The real issue is in Mombasa. Now, the question that I want to answer here and in the wake of this Kakamega saga is Kakamega and Mombasa issue. Do you think this election will stand the integrity tests? Either, and standing the integrity test is both on litigation, when someone is going to Supreme Court, and on the public court, will the public accept? That is very important because it creates the space even for the government of the day. There is a clip that uh, is going viral. <laughs> I know they should play it for you. It's a nine second clip. Huh? And I think listen, listen to that clip there. By Mohamed Dichopevu saying that uh, we want more numbers in the National Assembly so that we can come and impeach Raila. Just have a listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to that. He's saying that they want to impeach Raila. That tells you, that, that brings the question of will this election, or will the results stand the integrity test? Because that's what I see. Someone is already sitting somewhere to reject the results. And, of, and when, when that statement, as much as he's talking about the members of parliament, but it's something. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly subscribe to our channel click the notification bell and like our video before I look at these three aspects that will answer the integrity test question. We are also conducting a fundraiser for Sarah Tironyango, subscribe in this channel, who is locked in Kenyatta Hospital suffering acute leukemia with a bill closed to 1 million, now 1 million, it was 1.5, NHF covered part of the bill and now she Meaning the bill of 500, uh, 1 million, we have managed to pull 500,000, and so we were doing 21 days challenge. We're just seven days to the end of it, so we're still reaching out and just asking you guys to come up in your numbers and just support at least 50 shillings donation through my number and also Sarah's number. My number is 0710 62 78 89. It will appear Kevin Oduor. Hello. And you can also reach out to Sarah, even talk to her, 0716-357-360. And we know that my target is uh, after the 21 days, we shall be in a position to pull a 1 million shillings check. Even if it's Africa, I just, I, I just have a feeling that we will achieve it. Now, three issues that must be addressed for this election to pass the integrity test. 
both in the public court and in the Supreme Court. <laughs> the public court is here. Number one is the security specifications of the ballot papers. If you remember the 2017 case, NASA versus IBC, there were a lot of inconsistencies in terms of the special security features and the serial number, some of the result declaration forms did not have even the special uh, the, the serial numbers. Some of them were not the same. And someone was saying that perhaps even some of NASA agents did not sign the result declaration forms. The security specifications of the ballot papers is very important. And I'm raising this I'm talking about this now because what has actually brought the problem in Kakamega and Mombasa is the ballot paper. There have also been the way there are some ballot, stray ballot papers that were found somewhere in Choka and they were supposed to be in FIFA ward in Garissa. So the ballot paper is a very important material in this election. One of the things, and, and in the presidential results, in the presidential uh, election, it is not just about the quantity. The Supreme Court 2017 pronounced itself and said it's also about the quality. That is one thing that must be. Number two is the issue of the manual question. There have been a lot of, and, and you can even, you even wonder, are the courts trying to Ma who has the muscles between Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal. And I think if there was an issue that also needed to go to Supreme Court was this issue of the manual. When the High Court ordered that the IBC must have that, the UDA team waited last minute, they went to the Court of Appeal, got an injunction, and so IBC has reverted back to the manual. And that is not a problem. I don't think it's time now to complain. But the issue where I'm going, the reason I'm raising the manual question is if the Kims fails. And someone comes out saying that maybe he did not vote or he was in a polling station. And there was an element of suppression because a litigation can also be launched by the public. So this is a question that is very important. And the issue of the manual question where every person that walks to a polling station must vote. That will already that will puncture the integrity test of this i also see the results transmission the telling in 2013 and 2017 it failed halfway <laughs> it failed halfway and so um this time they did a pilot it was i think 40 percent efficient the reason why this result transmission aspect is very critical is because for the first time the media is going to do telling. The political parties are doing their own telling. Uh, even some observers are doing their own telling. Individuals are doing telling. Private, I was just getting privy to some state, some, some, but also some private entity is also doing their own. So what this means is this, that if the IBC live transmission is going to Kwamad somewhere in the midnight, then Kenyans will be receiving a lot of data from media, even though I am yet to find out what is the protocol of the tallying at, at, by the media and the polling station. I had the privilege of visiting one of the polling stations of one of the political parties. Huh? And uh, I, of course, I understand the protocol for the political parties because of them, they have the agents, which is in the IBC protocol structure because the political parties must have agents. I don't know what the media are allowed to have their own agents there unless they only have reporters and reporters are not in part of the Rene, the reporters are not allowed to then film everything there during the voting process. So for the first time there will be a lot of transparency from other alternative sources. So these alternative sources, Kenyans already have a, 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 a question, a confidence on IBC, IBC must up their game because there are other alternative lenses at the polling station. These alternative lenses might create an alternative perception and this can really affect the results transmission. Lastly, 
security and I want to say security and the operation of the agents. In 2017, there was a problem with the agents, with the NASA agents. Some of them did not sign. Some of them were just for the polling station and this and that. So that was a bit of suppression. I think someone was asking, and a question I've, I've really struggled to answer that question in this channel. The, the question on whether Azimio and Kenya Kwanza agents are going to adhere rules or some of them are going to be compromised. Is this going to be there? I think the guarantor of security of agents and for the places where there are strongholds, they should be, be given really security one. Because in a place in a place where there is stronghold of the other, they can experience some hostility. Some of them had started. Remember one in uh, Moiben. So um, this is something that will be done well so that the social media space is very elaborate. It's very open. The social media can blow, blow a very small thing in an election day by 10 a.m. 10 a.m. washa blow kitu. If they blow something, it creates a momentum. By the time results are coming out, the public has lost confidence. So IBC must get something right. Lastly, the reason why this is needed is this. A presidential rerun, whether it's participating, well, whether all the parties are going to participate, it can experience voter apathy. And if this election is bungled, then people go for a rerun, it will have apathy. Because the morale of people goes down, people want to finish this thing round one, which I believe free and fair round one, uh, whoever wins is going to win round one. I need to be very specific. And in a return, there are logistics that maybe some people are traveling and that has not been factored in. They cannot travel twice in a year. The same thing, the euphoria has gone down. Mobilization by the MCAs, governor and the rest is a bit, will, will then go down because everyone will be mobilizing for the presidential one. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is my take and what do you think? Will this election stand the integrity test? <laughs> that is it. I have my next video on who critical analysis of these candidates and in this election. What exactly is at the booth? That's what I'm going to analyze next. Amazing.